my um, journey in tourism went from being a tour operator myself to um, being the chair of Tourism Concern, um, which is a charity that looks at human rights and tourism. And um, when I was there, I started working on water and tourism. And so a lot of the work that I'm known for is the work about water and tourism. But through my work on water and tourism, what I grew to understand is that it's women that are more impacted um, by the negative consequences of tourism, um, particularly in relation to water. Um, and hence my need, I've, I've always said that you need to look at tourism, not just as tourism, but tourism and how it fits in with all the other structures and systems within a society. And um, if you talk about water and tourism, people look at you like, what is the connection between water and tourism, right? Let alone if you say to them that my area is water, women and tourism, it's like, what is the connection between water, women and tourism? From seen from where I look at it, the impacts of tourism are that tourism overuses the water in the community to the extent that women are negatively impacted by tourism. Um, where I've just been doing um, research in uh, Labuan Bajo in Indonesia, where there's an um, extremely rapid rate of the increase in tourism without the water system being sorted before that increase in tourism. So we call Labuan Bajo the town of a thousand jerry cans. Women have to walk, queue, carry, save, share and very importantly worry constantly about water. Whereas the tourist goes and swims in their pool, goes and has their shower before going in the pool and after going in the pool and after they come off the beach and relaxes and enjoys abundant non-stop water flowing while the local women suffer from the consequence of the tourism industry. In Labuan Bajo the tourism industry can afford to pay far more for water than the local people are able to pay for water. I talked to women in Labuan Bajo, they can't have a job because they have to wait for the water to flow. Water flows um, down pipes, if you're lucky enough to have piped water, two or three hours a day, two or three times a week. But you don't know which hours on what days. So it can be midnight to 2 a.m. on a Monday or four till six on a Thursday. It's random when the water flows. So the women can't work because they have to be at home waiting for the water. And then when the water flows, they have to fill up as many, many possible containers as they can possibly find because they don't know when the water's gonna flow again next. For other women, it was a matter of, because the costs of water are so great, they were going into work, it was exploitative labor, it was abusing their rights. They weren't getting maternity pay, they weren't getting holiday pay, they weren't getting sick pay, they weren't getting any of the things that we generally consider to be essential for um, anybody in the workplace. Um, and this was just to cover the costs of water because the costs of water were so great. The only medical facility at the time in Labuan Bajo when I was doing the research had no running water. But all water work, whether it's carrying water, washing plates, washing clothes, bathing children, whatever you want to call it, all water work is women's work. And when a woman gets a job in tourism, none of those other jobs get taken by somebody else. They are still women's jobs. And so this, um, there is the problem of double burden. And in, for, for many of the women, it's triple burden because they're having to walk to collect the water. And also the emotional problems that go along with constantly worrying about whether there's enough water in the house. One of the, the, the quotes from the women is, women can enjoy urinating um, in a pool of water. We can't urinate because we don't have water. 
um, the same um, family were saying that, you know, you can't go out to a meeting because you haven't washed your face. So you miss decision making forums um, through the lack of water. So and, and that is all because of the tourism industry overusing the water supplies. So what is the link between women and water and tourism it, it all comes together there but only if you spotlight on the consequences of tourism for women um, via the nexus of water